Hello everyone, Sigmalator here. Welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West. Man, this is pretty. No, we're not going to talk to you, although we probably should do at some point. What are you? Unknown. Second verse, I need to come up where it is. Uh, see his hands. Turn to the base. Yeah, let's do that. Go upload Poseidon to Gaia. See how everyone else is doing as well. Probably going to be another chatty episode, but uh, what these games are like. Oh, hello. I see you, champion. Sit, please. All right. Heard the lowlanders have been fighting rebels by the coast, west of the grove. If you're still helping the chief handle those scabs, you might want to talk to Cregella at Tide's Reach. If I make it out there, I'll see what I can do. Getting loads of side quests from these people. I said enough. All right. Let's get head back up here. Hey everyone, I'm back. I just think she talks a lot. You would do. She can also crank out a whole army of machines to kick your sorry behind when she's fixed. Well, I guess I just better stay on her good side then. Yeah, you better. I'll catch up with you guys in a second. I want to get Poseidon uploaded. Welcome hey, guy. Back, Aloy. I see you have recovered Poseidon. I have indeed. Excellent. Hey, Gaia. Me again. Welcome back, Aloy. Where shall we resume? So, I guess Beta's here to stay. I gave her a focus. Told her to talk to you to see if she can help. She's... not what I expected. What were you expecting? I don't know. Someone more helpful, I guess. And less pessimistic. It is true she overestimated our progress. However, it is also worth noting that her confidence in your abilities emboldened her to escape the Zeniths. I guess so. Give her time. She may yet come around. So there's a few people here now, and they're learning all about you, the ancient world. Almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh Plague. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite somber. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. 
I have elected not to intervene, to allow him to process this on his own terms. Probably a good idea. When I dove down into Vegas, I found data about the man who built the dome over the city, Stanley Chen. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? The Zeniths at their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. When we were at the facility where we found Beta, there were records that said Far Zenith were researching embryogenesis. I know they traded their ectogenic chambers to Zero Dawn, but why were they researching it in the first place? At this point, we can only speculate. Perhaps at one time they meant the Odyssey to be a colony ship, necessitating such technology. As their goals evolved over time, so did their areas of research. So they got more selfish as the risks of staying on Earth kept rising. Uh. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. According to my data, however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. We've got a lot to look into. So Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines. It is in my human life above. So yes, once I have, I could design. Given the yeah, we, yeah, we've, no we've, how. we've had this conversation. Indeed. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gesting and acculturing a new Apollo was in disseminating. Unfortunate, all are. Pharaoh, huh? Understand. He appears. All three of the four were prevented. Do you still need them? Restore empowering my. Unfortunately, attaining them in the. Sh I guess our best shot at recovery, but we'll need Hephaestus. Correct. Okay. Uh. No, I think we're good now. I'll be off. Farewell, for now. All right, cool. So, who else do we have? And on beta. Bloody hell, level thirty-two, right? Into the past, I've wanted to recover Demeter, one of Gaia's lost subordinate functions. Elon must traverse a vast expanse of wilderness. Okay.
Right, I'm not going to talk to these guys yet because I am not strong enough to do their missions. Better see what Beta and Varl are up to first. It sounded important. Oh, really? All right, it's going to make me go talk to them. Fair enough. Hi! <laughs> Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. She found that recording from the data on your focus. She's been watching it a lot. I think it helps calm her. Oh, that was from the first game. You know, I used to watch this a lot too. Whenever I wanted to take my mind off things. Daddy sure does love his little bit. But there's something you need to tell me. While you were gone, I came down here to check on her. Then we started talking. Right, Beta? She's been thinking about how to capture Hephaestus, We're studying the data Gaia gave her. But we started talking about some other stuff. You know, just getting to know each other, right? And then she told me that one of the Zeniths might be different from the others. Tilda. You saw her at the Hades Proving Lab. Go on. On the way to Earth, the Zeniths never showed their faces. My servitor caretaker referred to them as my benefactors and promised I'd meet them someday when I had learned enough. And then? One day, a data channel opened in my training interface. In it, Tilda was waiting for me. In a virtual replica of a house on a cliff overlooking the ocean. It was beautiful. She showed me paintings, books, media files. We met there in secret many times. But a few months later, it stopped. Can you tell us why, Beta? I found some data about Tilda at the Hades Proving Lab. I think she was a liaison between Far Zenith and Zero Dawn. She knew Elizabeth Sobek, that's for sure. Maybe that's why she reached out to you? What else can you tell us about Tilda? She... liked to talk about her paintings. What about herself? Did she ever talk about her life on Earth? How she joined the Zeniths? Something like that? She never said much about herself, and she hated it when I asked too many questions. But I think, back on Earth... She was an expert programmer, given that she built a data channel the other Zeniths couldn't detect. Is there anything else about her that we might be able to use to our advantage? She was the first real person who ever bothered to speak to me. I wasn't really assessing her for strengths and weaknesses. You said that Tilda reached out to you using a data channel? It appeared in my training interface as another assignment. When I opened it, there were a series of intermittent glitches. I realized they formed a transpositional cipher. Instructions on how to open up a new virtual space. When I entered it, my training interface disappeared. Instead of the usual holographic teachers and files, I was in a perfect recreation of her home. And you're sure the other Zeniths never knew about it. To them, it looked like I was still in training, toiling away, alone. So this secret virtual space looked like a house with an ocean view? I could see white caps and hear waves crashing on rocks below. And there were gulls crying outside. Inside, Tilda had frames that showed off her favorite paintings. 
changing at intervals to match the light. There was an armchair she liked. She'd sit there and gaze outside while I looked through her things. We spent hours in that house. I never wanted to leave. You said Tilda showed you paintings and let you access media files? Every time we met, she showed me a new painting. I, I think she was Dutch. All of her favorite pieces were from their golden age in the 1600s. Portraits, allegories, ships at sea. She had so many. Did it interest you? I liked her media portal. It had so much more than my training interface. Clips, shows, hollows. My favorite was this one called Second Time Around, about a family whose kid comes back after disappearing during the hot zone crisis. Right, but did this portal have anything about the Zeniths themselves? Anything we could use? No. Any information about them was redacted. So Tilda set up a secret virtual space where she could talk to you, a house on a cliff. Then later, she cut you off. But other than the fact that Tilda knew Elizabeth, you don't know why she did those things? I don't! Okay? I thought of every possible reason that would make her leave, but whatever I did wrong, I don't know what it is. When I finally met the others, she ignored me. Acted like the data channel never existed. None of this even matters. Tilda's the same as the others. It won't help us defeat them. Okay. Let's leave it at that, then. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. What's wrong? I'm trying, Laurel. But she is tough to take. I'm out there in the wilds, risking my life every day, and all she can do is hide in there and tell us how hopeless it all is. I'm sorry. She's had a rough time, but she is really not helping right now. Hmm. You always seem to be on top of everything, so I sometimes forget about what you've been through. I mean... It wasn't that long ago you were so banged up you couldn't even walk. About that. When I pulled you out of the water back near the proving lab, you were muttering Rost's name. You never talk about it. But he raised you. Trained you. You must miss him a lot. Of course I do. But I don't have time to think about that now. I need to get back out there. Okay. I'll keep working with Beta. Gaia says she knows a lot about Zero Dawn. And maybe she just needs some time to adjust, and then she can help us with Hephaestus. Sure. But I won't hold my breath. Come on, Aloy, don't be a dick. Although I can't say I trust Beta completely either. Part of me feels like she might be a plant. Well, there's more rooms apparently that we've unlocked, so. Let's have a look. Maybe not around here. I don't think that door had power before, but. Looks like it's malfunctioning. Alright, let's have a look in here then. Looks like some kind of maintenance space. Show me your secrets. I wonder where this leads. We'll get there. Let's, uh, Get our ammo back up, shall we?
Well, I'm obviously going to need this for something. Okay, it's, it's brought me all the way back around here. There was another power cell up here. Maybe there's a place I can put you in. Anything around here? You're still locked. Is this door always locked? Beta requested the use of that room as her personal space. I have locked it at her request. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Better keep this down here. That's an exit. Beta's been difficult to figure out. She's just so closed off. I get that the Zeniths were cruel to her, that the one called Tilda abandoned her, but I can't get her out of her shell. I don't know. Maybe nothing can. I know Varl meant well bringing up Rost. I just. I guess it's hard to talk about. With everything going on, it feels easier to set those memories aside. At least for now. When I met Hikaru, I figured he was just another bloodthirsty warlord. Vishal was right. Hikaru wants peace. It won't be easy. But with his new marshals, maybe his vision has a chance. Uh, good, we're all stuck back up. Oh, looks like I can open that door now. There's a lot of equipment in here. Gaia, what was all this for? This room was designed for management of the facility's vast seed banks. From here, control center operatives would have monitored new crop rotations into the automated farmlands, now known as Plainsong. I see. According to this console, there are still thousands of plant samples stored deep below the facility. I could ask Gaia about them the next time I talk to her. Alright. I've been tackling the design of the Ag Lab. Place is gonna have a lot of seed stock to work with. My favorite? Sample 626. Calotropis gigantea. The crown flower. We used to have one. In our backyard. Butterflies always fluttering around. Every morning, August would run out there to check under the leaves. See if any caterpillars turned into chrysalises. Now, I'd like to imagine that the future will be filled with them. Gaia? What was this room for? This was intended to be a recreational room for control center operatives. 
I have repurposed the displays to track Regal's activity in the region. A useful war map. <laughs> and what's through here? You don't go anywhere. Oh, hello. Another room. What for? Switch to a private log. Okay, so. Regional Control Center 9. Design of the facilities coming along. When Gaia finally builds it, it'll have everything it needs. Except personality. So, I'm going to sneak in my own mark. A, a couple of flourishes. Starting with this little tucked away hideout. August would have gotten a kick out of it. He loved hidden passages, like the kind in old English castles. But I've got something bigger planned. My piece de resistance, if you will. Okay. What did you have planned, dude? The rebels know exactly where to hit us. Mind if we have a word? Of course not. You said you were training with the Focus? That's right. I've been watching holograms of your first fight with the Zenith Spectres. They are faster and more agile than any machines I've faced before. How many do the Zeniths have? I'm not sure. Probably a lot. I would not wish to face them en masse. I'm with you there. Must be strange. Seeing everything through a focus now. I can see machines like never before. Their strengths and weaknesses simply reveal themselves to me. To think that such a tiny object might be the most powerful weapon I've ever possessed. What do you think of this place? It must take some getting used to. It's an efficient center of operations and an acceptable training facility. So it could use some more color. Do they know it? <laughs> Getting ether out of the grove made for quite a spectacle. One that showed the entire tribe that Hikaro's mission for peace is the correct path, for it is now blessed by the ten themselves. I heard my friend Talana came by the base. Did you get a chance to meet her? Briefly. A bold woman going into Tanakh territory with that Karja armor of hers. She'll be lucky if my people don't shoot her on sight. She'll be careful. She's just looking for someone who might need her help. Whoever it is, they better be worth dying for. Have you had a chance to speak with Varl? Briefly. He fought well against Regala's troops at Baron Light. Are all Nora as skilled as the two of you? I'm not exactly one of them. But anyway, the Nora can hold their own. They managed to push the Karja from their lands. I thought my tribe was the only one to have done that. Impressive. <laughs> Does it still hurt? It comes and goes. I try not to think about it, but its absence is always present for me. It's difficult to explain. I can't claim to understand. Only empathize. Then you have my thanks. Have you spoken with Erend at all? I've had little chance to. I did see him bring some ale from out east. That stuff's as bitter as self-brush. You get used to it, eventually. In fact, I wouldn't mind a drink myself. I'm sure Erend wouldn't mind sharing. Right. 
Okay, I'm n nothing new there. I should get going. If I can help in some way, say the word. I will. Thank you. Alright, let's catch up with the others. And how you doing? Hey, Aloy. Uh, it's everything all right? It, it seemed like you and Varl were down at that basement for a while. Yeah, everything's fine, I guess. Well, okay. Uh, what, what can I do for you? What are you working on with your focus? I'm still figuring out how to read stuff on this thing. Those two lovebirds over there have been giving me a hand. But to be honest, all the little symbols, they give me a headache. But I'll get up to speed. I promise. So, you've been sifting through loads of data? Yeah, it's interesting. There's lots of words. I, I thought maybe I could try finding things with more, you know, pictures in it. <laughs> Not much luck there, but I, I did find out about these uh, holofilms, like images put together to tell a story. How they were made to look like they were the real thing. You know, the Osaram like shows. I bet they pay a lot of shards for those hollows. That seems like you're getting a hang of this data thing. Yeah, it's been helpful. When I could make sense of anything. I did find the old ones enjoyed a good brew like the rest of us. Only they let machines serve the stuff in bars. They even let the damn things cut you off before you saw the underside of a table. Uh, and that's half the fun. Now, you won't see me letting a robot serve me a pitcher anytime soon. What you reading next? I saw a guy added something to the archives about metal rods being used to harness lightning during storms. The guy reminded me of a cousin of mine. Thought he could trap lightning if he covered himself in stormbird plates. Went up the tallest mountain in the claim to prove it. It ended like a lot of Osram things do. With a spark and a boom. Ouch. Did you speak with Beta at all? She didn't really wake up till we brought her here. And when she did, I, I thought it'd be better if Zoe and Varl took care of her. No use crowding someone when they're in a state. Yeah, that makes sense. How are things going around here? Hey, you tell me. Varl's new girlfriend tried to kill me earlier. What did you do? I made one joke. About how they, you know, eat grass a lot. How does anyone fight with nothing but tree leaves in their stomach anyway? From the looks of it, the Utaru. Yeah, well, I wasn't expecting her to be that fast. Just uh, try not to get hurt. I see someone's been playing strike. I'm just trying to get some practice in. Helps take my mind off things. You should try playing Katalo. It's a Tanakh game. Maybe you'll learn something. Oh, sure. Tanakh. Sure he won't try and kill me if I win? Pretty sure. Do I smell... ale? I brought some over from Chain Scrape. Hey, with everything that's been going on, I thought we could all use a drink. Besides, there is nothing that brings people together like a good brew. That's what my sister always said. You're more than welcome to have some. Maybe another time. I should get going. Back to reading, I guess. Do be careful out there. Hey, got a sec? Of course. It's good to see you and Zoe enjoying yourselves. We're learning a lot. I've actually been looking through the data to find ideas for a gift, and to thank her for helping me study the glyphs, something from the old world that she's never seen before. Instead, I found out they gave each other stuffed animals. If you ask me, stuffing a dead animal with anything, really, doesn't sound like a good time for anybody. Maybe Gaia can help you find something else. How's training? Discovering something new about our past every day. When we first met, you asked me if I ever wondered what this world looked like when the Old Ones lived here. I thought it was strange at the time, but a lot has changed since I left the Embrace. Now I'm just trying to make sense of everything I thought I knew, and versus everything I know now. 
The change is hard, but it gets easier over time. You feeling okay? I was just thinking about Beta and all that time spent with the Zeniths. To think someone would make a person just to lock them in a room to use when needed, like some sort of tool. Elizabeth Sobek sacrificed herself for the world, and yet they have no trouble treating Beta like a slave. Another reason we have to stop them. How's everyone dealing with Beta? I tried explaining what a clone is to Aaron. He was totally lost. Then Zoe said something about two trees coming from one seed. That seemed to help a bit. Anything happen I should know about? Zoe and Aaron tried to beat each other up. What? Aaron made some jokes about the Utaru, called them twigs or something like that. So she challenged him to a sparring match. Turns out that Utaru speed is a pretty good match for Osir and Braun. Things ended in a stalemate. Now they spar once in a while to see if they can break it. Well, let me know how it goes. <laughs> it's hard to believe we're dealing with the original Zeniths. The same ones that left for Sirius a thousand years ago. To live on for so long. It doesn't seem natural. Because it's not. That weapon we found where Beta was hiding. Any chance we can use that against them? Silence made sure that wasn't an option. Why would he build something to hurt Farzina? yet allow them to capture you. With silence, there's always an angle. We just don't know what it is yet. What do you make of this Tilda that Beta was talking about? Well, the way she described it, I can't shake off the feeling that Tilda wanted something from Beta. Maybe because she's Elizabeth Sobek's clone? But whatever she wanted, I don't think she got it. If we knew what it was, maybe we could use it to our advantage somehow. Uh, I don't know. I don't think Tilda and Elizabeth were on the best of terms. Oh well. At least we can take some comfort in knowing the Zeniths don't trust each other. Maybe. You brought up Rost before. I do think about him. You know, he was all I had. And he brought me up the best he could. Not only that, when Hades discovered who I was and sent the Eclipse after me, he sacrificed himself so I could survive. But that seems like ages ago. So much has happened since. What I'm doing now... I don't think he could even begin to understand it. The Sacred Lands were all he really knew. So I can't let myself dwell on him. Not with everything I have to do. I understand. Sometimes, when I think about my sister... About what she would have become if she had survived the Proving... It hurts, and I just need to bury it for a while. But only for a while, Aloy. You can't ignore it forever. Memories always come back. The ones that matter, anyway. I know. But for now, the mission has to come first. Fair enough. This is getting a bit deep. I should get back out there. We'll be here if you need us. Uh, right, let's catch up with Zoe. Then I want to talk to Gaia again. Aloy. Hey, how's everything going? I am well, but Varl told me Beta's having a hard time adjusting to life here with us. I wish there was something I could do to help. I'm not sure any of us can. A tree won't bear fruit in a day. We'll do our best to make her feel welcome. Found anything else combing through that data? Varl and I have been looking into the animals of the old world. Apparently there used to be thousands more species roaming around than there are today. Can you imagine that? I'd give anything to see them. Even as holograms. Though I know that without Artemis or Apollo that may prove difficult. At least I can find comfort in knowing Gaia used many of them as inspiration for her machines. Her memory honors them. What are you going to learn next? I'm not sure. I asked Gaia for suggestions, and she brought up data you found on something called a... museum? From what I gather, 
The old ones would store knowledge in them for all to see and learn from, like you've done here for us. Maybe one day more people will be able to use this place to learn the way we have. That sounds crowded, but nice. Because he has did a number on Beta. But she seems to trust Varl. I still can't believe she told him the Zeniths are immortals. Old ones who cut themselves off from the cycle of life and decay. I've never heard of anything so selfish. To deny our dying bodies to the Earth. To doom the life that would bloom in their place. It's despicable. Are you guys training with Erend as well? If you count trying to stick a spear in his gut as training, then yes. I've been told. Please tell me you weren't being serious, though. Of course not. Good. I was going for a couple of broken bones. He called the Utaru leaf grazers. Laughed at the idea of us simple farmers being formidable fighters. Before I knew it, he and I were battling it out in the common room. The man is slow, but he can throw a hammer around. Don't look so worried. We're evenly matched. For now. Next time he's going down like a load of boar dump. Just try not to kill each other. Injuring his pride should be good enough. Is there anything I can help with around here? Hmm? Oh, no. We're doing fine. Are you okay? You and Varl have been friends for a while. I like to think so. I was wondering... What do you know about his mother? Oh. That bad, huh? Why do you want to know? He's spoken of his sister, Vala, but... I noticed he avoids talking about his mother. She's the war chief of the Nora. Best warrior the tribe's ever known. Tougher than a Thunderjaw, but she could be pretty harsh at times. I see. That must have been hard on him. Thank you for telling me. I feel silly not being able to ask Varl directly. I wouldn't worry about it. He's probably afraid Sona will scare you off someday. I'd like to see her try. About the land gods, what did you want me to do again? We need to kill two Grimhorns and harvest their control cores. I sent their- That was it. I should get going. Good luck on your sir. Oh, more stuff. Uh, where was Gaia again? That goes outside. Here we go. Hey, Gaia. I'm back. So I see what is on your mind. So I talked to Beta. Didn't learn much. It seems to me you did. From what she describes, the Zeniths controlled every aspect of her life, even as they shunned her. This Tilda was the first person she ever had contact with. An abrupt severance of such a relationship would be very emotionally damaging. Yeah, I guess you're right. I found some data in one of the rooms you unlocked. It mentioned that there are still functional seed banks beneath this facility. Why is it there? My predecessor was tasked with reconstituting the biosphere with primary and secondary plant species. Had everything gone according to plan, humans would have eventually been able to introduce tertiary species, including new crops. Can we access them now? Unfortunately, it will have to wait. I require control over the machines in order to access and distribute the preserved seed stock. And for that we need a Festus. It's something to look into later then. Alright, excellent. I'll be on my way. 
I wish you safe travels. All right. I know this one was a bit of a talky episode, but that's how these games go. going to do that one yet and hopes per college academics oh yeah I can I can do that one now let's go and meet up with uh, Tala uh Talana right. she's over there there's a campfire down there. Over there. This house melts in my clothes. Great. Alright, don't know what happened there. Sit. I'll talk to you later. I'll push this episode on a bit further because there has been rather another story time episode. That Osaram camp Talana and I were trying to find should be around here. Here we go. Hello, everyone. Then I scrambled myself. Talana, glad to see you made it. Thanks to the secret passage through your base, it was quite a sight. Secret passage? Don't let the others hear you say that, or you'll have a lot of Osara knocking at your door. And you are? This is Ragard. He's a scout with this caravan. He says Amadis was here. He joined up with our expedition right before we went through the tunnel. After we made camp here, I set out to do some scouting. I also made peace offerings to the Tanakh for trespassing in their territory. Amadis wanted me to ask around about some place called... The Rot. What did you find out? Most I learned was that it's where the Tanakh took their prisoners. Somewhere far to the west near Thorn Marsh. The Lowland Clan's capital. He set out to find it not long after. Uh, on his own? I tried to warn him, but he was dead set on going. What happened when you went through the tunnel? Nothing. Our crew split into two groups to pass through. Everyone here was part of the first crossing. Aside from some pitch black passages, it was quiet. Whatever befell the second group spared us. Steel Spark be praised. But you best talk to Porgif about that. He knows a bit more than I do. All right, cool. Did Amada say anything about why he was heading to the Rot? Afraid not. He was a man of few words. Sounds like him. Did he look okay to you? More or less. He seemed shaken when we learned the tunnel had collapsed behind us. But then again, so was everyone around here. So you're a scout for this crew. Anything I should know about the area? Where to start? Down south, we've got a trio of Osirum trying to delve into the ruins in the sand. Moreland and his showman. Yeah, that's the fellow. They're quite a spectacle on their own, let me tell you. And then there are all the other folk who broke away as soon as we got to this side of the tunnel. Salvagers, explorers, all sorts of daring venturers. Just how many of you were there? Enough to lose track, that's for sure. I've also spotted some rebels a while back, too. Seems like they've been patrolling the desert. Heard all about the rebellion from the Tanakh up in Scalding Spear. 
That's the Desert Clan's capital, north of here. Sounds like you've really gotten to know the area. It's what I do. It's what I do. Thanks, Ragert. This has been helpful. Hope you find him. Okay, I'll head for Thormarsh. Meet me there. Hold on. What? You're willing to go to the ends of Tanakh's territory to find this guy. No hesitation. Of course, he's one man alone in the Forbidden West. I'm just worried about him. I think it's more than that. I'll meet you near the Lowland capital. But then, you're going to tell me who Amadis really is. Fine, I'll lay low, north of the village. See you there. All right. Looks like we have company. Why not rest for a moment, friend? All right. What you got for me? I hear the Tanakh are fighting each other quite a bit these days. Some of them contain machines. Those you've got to be real careful of. We've seen a whole bunch of them setting up outposts around here. Spotted one just west of here. A few settled at the edge of the desert in the southwest. They even set up camp in the south. Really helps a fellow sleep at night. Just make sure you steer clear of them. It's These girls are bad business. Will it be I'll keep an eye out for them while I'm out here. That girl was wound up tighter than a twisted spring. Now she's in the wilds, all alone. Forge knows all the things that could kill her out there. Someone ran off? I forgot her name. Kept quiet. Couldn't tell if she was shy or scared. All I know is she didn't want anyone near her things. That's for sure. I was just curious is all. She didn't have to slug me. Your glass jaw ain't the problem, Lugnut. The girl is. All alone in the bush? And this is Tanakh territory. Which way did she go? West, up the slope. Look for her if you can. I will. Careful now. The girl's maladjusted. Alright. Are you lost? Spark to steal. Aren't you a jewel in a junk heap? Excuse me? Hold the hammer. I know you. You're that Nora. <laughs> the savior. My savior. Right in the nick of time. The name's Poor Guff Delvesman. Chief Delver and leader of Poor Guff's expeditioners and purveyors of fine Delvewares. What am I saving you from, exactly? Death and despair, my steel flame friend. See, this grand expedition here has had a, a minor setback. Not far from here, there's a secret tunnel. A passage of the old ones, lost and then found. Me and half the crew came through first. The other half was supposed to follow right after. But days later, only one man turned up, shivering like a frog in chill water. Only thing we got out of him was that death and darkness chased them as the tunnel collapsed. Died with his eyes wide, he did. I've been to the tunnel's eastern side. The way was blocked by rubble. There was also a body, one of your delvers, I guess, but no sign of the rest of the crew. Keep your voice down, will you? The rest of the crew's already spooked. They're refusing to press on with the Delve until they're assured a way out of here. You lost half your crew and you're worried about the Delve. We gotta make their sacrifice worth something, right? And besides, now that you're here, maybe our sand-stranded days are over. Help me get that tunnel reopened and I'll cut you in on the Delver's fee. What do you say? Sure, why not? So this camp, it's your base of operations? What operations? The plan was to move further south once the rest of the expedition joined us. The Delve is right out beyond those dunes. But now the crew refuses to budge until this tunnel mess gets sorted out. They've even given this place a name. Camp Nowhere. I think they're mocking me. Really? I think they are. <laughs> How did you learn about this secret tunnel? The art of the Delve, of course. A Delver's only as good as his no sense for good sights. All right, fine. I heard about three Osram who knew a way to bypass those bloodthirsty Tanakh. Tap the untouched Delves of the West. So then I may have employed someone with the know-how for finding and following. A spy. Look, 
If the rumors are true, there's enough delving to employ a dozen operations. But someone has to take the first plunge, establish a base camp, set up a reliable supply route, guard the site against machines. Figures the Osram would turn sand into shards, I guess. Exactly. Care to explain why I found a bunch of Osram nearby trying to strip a tall neck for parts? You don't say. So out of all the untouched delves in this desert, they went after a tall neck instead? <laughs> Guess they weren't that bright after all. Weren't they part of your expedition? That's what I thought. But no sooner we got out of this side of the tunnel, they struck out on their own. Turns out, they only joined so they could learn the tunnel's location. It looks like the secret stayed with them to the grave. They were killed by machines. Ha! <laughs> so they got what was owed. Serves them right for meddling with the gentle old tall neck. Your compassion's overwhelming, mate. What do you know about this area? Well, north of here you got those vicious Tanakh. I heard rumor they drink blood instead of water. That's how they survive this wasteland. And south, it has it all. Death, desert, and the delve. Imagine, if you will, a vast grave of the old ones. Ruins of twisted metal concealed by the sands. All guarded by machines. So fierce that you'll wish you had a flock of glint hawks swooping down on you instead. Not even the Tanakh venture into the ruins' depths. Only the bravest explorers dare enter. I've been down there. Have you now? I've yet to lay eyes on the treasures myself, but I will, eventually. I'll see what I can do about the tunnel. Ha <laughs> ha! My savior. For the crew trapped here with you, not your delve. One and the same. That it, over there? That it is. Oh, and while you're at it, would you mind keeping an eye out for my lockbox? The second crew was supposed to bring the rest of the supplies and belongings. I'd hate to lose it to the wilds. It was hand carved by my dear old ma. I'll bring it back if I find it. I'd appreciate it. Good luck, still playing. All right. And on that note, I'm going to end this episode here. Now it's been a bit, another bit of a chatty one. I'll make it up to you in the next episode. But for now, thank you for taking the time to watch this, guys. If you liked it, like, subscribe, ding that bell. I'm for Sigma later. This has been Horizon Forbidden West, and I'll catch you next time. Take care now.